Welcome to the Upcycle Canada podcast. I'm Jennifer, and together with my husband Dave, we started with an idea, worked on it as a side hustle, and grew it into our our first eco-friendly store. At Upcycle Canada, we repurpose, refinish, and reuse discarded items, giving them new life. Sit in on the conversation as we continue to grow from a small side hustle into something much more. Special guests will drop by and share their journey with you as well. This is the most eco-friendly small business podcast in your favorites. This is Upcycle Canada, where yesterday's items are reborn. Let's do this. So, uh, hi everyone, this is Samantha from junebird.ca and you are listening to the Upcycle Canada podcast. Welcome. Thank yes. you and welcome. This is wonderful to have you here today. Yes. <laughs> Yes, welcome to our probably most interactive Upcycle Candle listener. Yes, ever. That's right. The first person to respond with the secret word of the day and then posted a beautiful, heartfelt video of her winning prize arriving in the mail. (laughs) Got me right in the feels. I got to tell you, (laughs) right in the feels. Thank you so much for sharing that. It's, this is great. I, I'm a little nervous because I feel like we already know each other and we have to live up to the expectations <laughs> of a great listener That's who has right. been listening to the Upcycle Canada podcast. So welcome. Yes. How are you? I am doing great. It's uh, been lots of fun listening to the two of you and I've had so much more uh, I'll say company as I'm working away in my cycled world as well. So it's been been quite fun getting to know the two of you and listening to all the Thank things you. that you've, you've done and accomplished so far. And I, I really look forward to listening to more and more and more and more from you guys. Excellent. Are you going to listen to your own as well? I am, this one? I'm going to brave it and I'm going to listen to my own. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's it's interesting after, like, even for ourselves, when we first started, I'd listen to it back and go, oh, like, I sometimes think, well, how did, I'm surprised I thought of that. Like, you know, like, I'm surprised myself when I'm speaking and I hear it afterwards. I'm like, oh, that was good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Not to brag about ourselves, no, but we're having but fun. I, but you I know, so yeah, yeah, it's good. It is fun to listen to yourself. <laughs> so the only thing with this one we were talking about is at the end of the podcast, you're going to share a secret word for our mm-hmm. listeners. Now, what's going to happen? Because you're going to know the secret word. Ooh, yes. Yeah. Well, I, this is a quandary. What am I going to? What am I going to reply? With? What are we going to do about that? We well, the fact that we've given her the chance to think about the secret word. Usually, we just throw it at yeah. the person right at the end, and they're That's like, "Ah, oh, trying to think really quick." So, so oh, you've got. We want to talk about Junebird.ca. If you're listening to this podcast, you need to go and check out junebird.ca we're going to put all the links for all these things we talk about in the show notes so people can just click them so we don't have to write them all down when we listen because we could be driving right now and that could be terrible um (laughs) but go to junebird.ca on instagram and and you need to follow samantha because she's doing great things tell us first of all where did the name junebird.ca come from junebird and how you got started we would love to hear it so I'll just start with uh, who we are. So junebird.ca is um, uh, what we do is we take uh, fabrics and textiles and upcycle them into new and creative um, toys and accessories for kids. And uh, I started this um really as a result of the pandemic, like lots of other things that have happened to to many of us. So I was six months pregnant when the pandemic came along in March, 2020 and everything shut down. Um, I had to stop working because I had a toddler as well. So there was, you know, three months of time where I was off and didn't expect to be off prior to uh, the due date, which was, which was May. Um, So, you know, we're trudging along, going along, um, we started making some masks for ourselves and the community, uh, just cause there was, you know, the need for that. And, you know, I was also going to be needing masks. So pregnancy was not ideal. So I was already in and out of the hospital quite a bit. So it was something I needed for myself and my family to have these masks. You know, nobody had them. It wasn't something that the world had ever thought of. So I had started, um, doing that, you know, time goes by, baby's born, I'm back home and, 
you know, you're isolated with a newborn as it is, never mind in a pandemic, you know, nobody can come and help you. You can't invite anybody over. People want to, but it's just, you know, it's, it's not, it's not safe to have people in, in your home or even ask them to come because it's, it's not fair to have to have them say no <laughs> to you. Um, so I struggled. I struggled so much. Like it was um, unbelievable what um, the isolation of COVID was on top of the isolation of, of the pregnancy with, you know, th- you know, nobody talks about it. So it's, it's really, actually really hard. Um, but, but the, you know, postpartum depression and things like that, that do a lot of women, um, quite, uh, quite a bit. Um, so just to, to share that with you guys, it actually feels really nice that you want to listen and hear that, um, about, about how it, um, how it sort of came into my world a bit. Um, and I'm just like, what am I doing? I'm so lost. I'm so just, you know, I'm not myself. Like I barely even felt human um, after this. And, you know, you're, you're, you're sleeping in 45 minute increments and, and, you know, just the, the weight of newborn and pandemic was just like mentally just too, <laughs> too much. Um, so I finally, I just kind of remembered, I'm like, sewing the masks it was so relaxing and it gave me a purpose it had you know me doing something and you know I needed things for my newborn you know you have one baby the second baby you know they're never going to be the same (laughs) so you know my my second my daughter she was much more drooly and you know a worse sleeper and needed a pacifier and all these things that I didn't experience with the first and like I can't get this stuff like it's still COVID. You can't order things. You can't find things. Things are like delayed, delayed, delayed just by the nature of everybody needing to order online. So when I realized, oh, I can, I can make them. I have these old torn clothes that nobody can wear anymore. I can't take them anywhere because nothing's being ex- accepted. I'm like, oh, the sewing, the masks. Why don't I start sewing these drool bibs? Drool bibs were the, were the first thing that that I started. So, um, I made a few of those and what I started realizing is, um, I guess the, the sewing machine that I have is, is from my grand, my, my grand, and she's, you know, in her nineties now. Um, and, you know, and I, I couldn't see her. It's still, I barely have even seen her in the last three years because of COVID. So every time I started sewing, it was this connection to my grand who used to sew all of her clothes when we were little. She used to, you know, make, toys for us she'd make matching uh dresses for our dolls that we would have a matching dress as like a little girl so but I still have a, a box of her clothes that she made for for our, our dolls and you know we'll bring them out when my daughter's a little older um so she was the one and her name is June so that's where the June comes from uh, in our name and uh you know, sitting there at the sewing machine was this connection to the family that I, do, I couldn't see and you know, it gave me this, this meditative sort of relaxing creative outlet that would let me escape my sort of own lockdown world and my own isolated world and, um, gave me something that I could actually use in my home. Um, so the more I started thinking about it, the more of how could I share this with other people and, and what are all the other sort of driving, you know, factors in my life of, of inspiration and strongness. So, um, the the second part of her name, the uh, bird, is a uh, dedication to my grandfather who has this love of birds. All that he ever wanted to do was bird watching. He could you know, always find him knowing everything about birds, seeing everything about birds. You know, if you ever stumped on what to get him, you know, there was never enough bird feeders that they, <laughs> they could have in in their yard. So um, the June bird is a combination of of their names and dedicated really to the two of them as a sort of inspirational, strong set of people that have always been around in in my life. I love Very it. cool. That, That's uh, really cool. Kind of the story of how we started and why the why the connection to the sewing and and um, being able to share that and tell people that I have had this experience and what's led up to it and hopefully be able to inspire people to to follow through on some of the things that they want to share with with others is is what we're also trying to do excellent so when did you make the decision to go from making stuff for yourself to start making stuff for other people um so 
almost instantly, really, I'm like, everybody needs these things. Like the community is going to need some place to find things locally. You know, how can I get the word out to let our neighborhood know that I can give them resources um, to new parents or even parents that want to find new toys and new things for their kids so they don't have to wait so long. So I, you know, it, it took a, you know, a few months to sort of get up and going with um, social media and websites and and getting the word out but it was like it was just such a purpose because that sort of brain shift like I've never really had that experience where you feel such a strong I don't even know how to explain it but like a motivation where you know I'm, I'm so down low and all of a sudden it was like the first time I actually had some sort of I'll say <laughs> like true happiness in a, in a long time um and I'm like, that's it. If, if I can feel like this, then everybody needs to feel like this or have the opportunity to, to have that, that light switch go off. Like that true light bulb moment was, was what, what did it for me. You're like really at the, at, at the beginning of, you know, I had made a, just a, a couple of um, drill bits for myself and for the baby to use. And I'm like, that's it. Everybody's, everybody's going to need this. Everybody's going to want to want to know and how can I help them, you know, achieve some of these go- goals? Cause there's no way I'm the only person struggling like this. So do you have a mentor that kind of helped you with starting a business and doing social media and building a web, all that stuff? Do you have mm-hmm. somebody in your corner that helps you with that? Or are you just doing this and learning it as you go? I'm partly learning as I go. I mean, um, it's short of, um, you know, the small amount of podcasts I listen to, there is one, um, that I connected with for a uh, business, um, as well. So they've been uh, good supports and the good resources and tools and, uh, workshops and, um, classes and things that I've been able to take through that organization to, um, put, uh, put into good practice as well. So they help with a lot of things of, um, social media planning and, um, uh, content planning. So uh, I do it mostly on my own, but just with their support and knowledge um, to, uh, I guess, use as a guide, <laughs> if that makes sense. But a lot of it is is definitely sort of self-initiated. Like the website was my own um, work in progress. I mean, I think it's, it's up and it's going. And I think, you know, I've had some great feedback on it, but that was all my own learning. Mm-hmm as well. I'd never designed a website before. So I'm, I'm definitely open to feedback on that as well. So so having a small business, you wear a lot of hats, yeah. which you could probably make as well. But <laughs> uh, you wear a lot of hats, right? And you, you have to be kind of a little bit of everything when you're starting out because you don't have financial resources to hire people to hire a team, right? You kind of have to do this yourself or it's not going to happen. So Having a resource like that is is great. And I'm sure there's other people who are in the same boat that you are in that would love to have that resource. So, you know, we can always share that resource here on the podcast and, and let people know about that because it might be something that people would be interested in kind of following your path yeah, and yeah. maybe speaking to somebody like this, right? Yeah, for sure. I can definitely send you that information if you wanted to pop it in your show notes. Um, that'd sure. Be that'd be great. Yeah. That'd be great. So you got your training to do what you do through your family yeah. and growing up in that environment. Um, are there are there any things that you have taken as far as classes to help develop your skills beyond what you've learned through your family or everything you've done is based on that? Everything's based on, on the family, uh, just from seeing what, uh, what my gran has done, the quality of work that she's made. You know, the things that she, the ideas that she's come up with. So from the creative side all the way through to technical side um, as as well. So it's all been sort of learned through her and then just self-practice and, you know, and just giving myself time to create something, see how it looks, alter it a little bit until it's sort of finessed into the right, <laughs> the right shape or the right toy or the right size. Um, and really just having that patience with myself to, to get things right or the way that I want them to be, <laughs> be right. Yeah. yeah. We're our worst enemy, I, I think, sometimes for, or critic, you know, yeah. I suppose, when it comes to that. Because I know we've done the same when we're creating things. Yeah. We see the flaws exactly. that have happened throughout it. And, and you learn, though, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You definitely I think yeah, that's a, that. That's the hardest thing for a new business, I think, is 
to wait until you think you're perfect before you start. Yeah. yeah. Instead of just starting. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, right. you have to try. Yeah. Just just starting is fantastic. And that's definitely one of the things I would I'd like to, you know, reiterate too. It's like you just just go for it. Like you're never gonna be hundred percent ready. It's never gonna be hundred percent perfect. And um, you know, you plan what you what you can and then you know, just just go. Just go for it and see what um see what people have to say and take the compliments and, and take the critics and, you know, work, work with both of them. It's probably nice to even just to throw the idea out to your friends and family and say, Hey, I'm thinking of doing this. What are your thoughts? Yeah. You know, just to kind of get that bit of encouragement as well. And just a little push probably to even once you've talked about it out loud, it's almost like, okay, you know, I've kind of shared this. I probably should should start right yeah. and, and you kind of commit to it a little bit better for sure. um another thing i'm thinking for your products so the fabrics that you have is it um do you have a lot of where do you get them from is it recycled fabric some of it do you buy stuff new do you get things donated that kind of stuff uh it, i'm gonna say it's mostly uh donated so there is a local um uh, i'll say pre-loved children's fashion store in our neighborhood that I connect you with and anything that they can't resell because people will bring sort of on a, I guess um, a resale or consignment basis and anything that she can't buy from the, from the people who drop things off because she inspects them really carefully. And there's, you know, a few holes or a few stains, you know, the people probably don't, you know, necessarily want them back. They can't be donated for use because there's, there's holes in them. Um, I'll go and collect all those items from her. So it's a lot of children's clothes, of sleepers and pajamas and t-shirts and use as much of it as I can in the products that I make. So everything primarily is some type of clothing that's just not quality enough for, for resale or donation to, to a charity. Very cool. So you don't have a problem getting material then? Not, not too oh, much. Yeah. Um, it's, it's okay. pretty good. I mean, like there's always, um, you know, I guess as I keep going, I'm sure I'm going to start to run <laughs> low on, on my resources. And, you know, I definitely want things to go first to, you know, be resold through through the fashion, the children's fashion, secondhand stores in the neighborhood. And then donated, it would be the next best thing to a family that just maybe needs some assistance with um, clothes for their child. And then the third would be would be to me so I can turn it into something else. Um that can be new and, and loved for, for a long time again. So was that a conscious decision when you were starting that you wanted to do, uh, use recycled materials or was it at a cost savings to use recycled materials? It was kind of both. It was kind of, um, it, um, you know, I, hard to get materials in the first place because of the pandemic and where can I shop and what can I, what time can I get? And then how can I also make it affordable for, for people to get new, new items for their, for their kids? So if I were to be able to source materials at um, minimal cost or low cost or even no cost, um, then that, um, cost savings is sort of passed down to people so that there is a different, um, market or a different um, price point that gives people options to buy buy as well. So reusing the fabrics also kind of comes back into, you know, kids are into their clothes or their toys for such a short period of time that everything's outgrown and you kind of feel bad about the short usage of stuff, whether it's, it is a toy or it is a piece of clothes, uh, clothing, clothing. Uh, so having the, uh, the option of something that's already been loved once turned into something else, you feel a little bit more confident getting the things for your kids that they need and not having as much of an environmental impact as well on, on that whole, um, the whole process of just getting things for your kids to, to get them through like that one month, like, you know, I knew like my daughter, like she can't be drooly forever, but I, I don't want to <laughs> buy yeah. all these drool bibs for her to use for one month because I'm like just so tired of changing clothes, you know, reusing and making, making those, which are still good and that I could pass them on to somebody else as well. Uh, so that was when I started just thinking more and more and more about it. Uh, it just, it just seemed to be the right solution. 
That's right. And when, when babies grow so fast, like little sleepers, right? They have them for a week, two weeks, three weeks, and they're already outgrowing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're like, uh, well, now what do I do with all this stuff? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you need to send it to junebird.ca, and that's where it needs to go. That's where it needs to go. Right? Yeah. To know that it's going to be repurposed and reloved, that's yeah. that's a great mm-hmm. solution. And I love I love our, the podcast because we get a chance to talk to people that are a part of a solution, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. We, we've all found an, a problem in whatever area that we do, and we've been able to identify the problem. And now, what can I do to fix that? Or what can I do to step into the gap? And you're, you're doing that. And that's admirable from us to look at and, you know, we're cheering you on saying, this is exactly what, what we need. And, uh, yeah. you know, are there people in your corner cheering you on where you are? Uh, yeah, yeah, there definitely are. So I think we've got uh, like well, family is really supportive in um, just getting. I don't even know what the the word is, but just getting the um, the the time the time that uh, allows me to do what I want to do for you know, for me and for me to feel so. Um, empowered, I guess, is also <laughs> the other one um, to have a contribution to the community in this way with upcycling, um, and then meeting the people in the community as well who are supportive of this, and the neighbors who I've been able to chat with and have them just realize, oh yes, there are so many other um, resources out there, and connecting with people that have similar or you know complementary businesses that I'm just starting to find and. It's just created a whole other world of people that I wouldn't have been able to connect with before. So there's so much support from, you know, right in the home to strangers, basically, that, that are out there. You know, I, I, I got an a instant message from somebody on my uh, Instagram saying, I just heard about you in this, this Facebook group and uh, you're, what you're doing is fantastic. And I'm like, who are you? <laughs> And yeah. I was like, and who told well, you? Who told you? So somebody else is out there talking about me. And I'm like, this Facebook group, I don't even know what it is. So then I had to go research that. And I and then since I've joined it to to follow follow who's in that group, and it was like zero waste in Toronto. And I'm like, wow, somebody's talking about me to somebody else who then just felt so compelled to say, Hey, I like what you're doing, keep it up. And I'm whoa it's just uh, yeah it feels good it's exciting right you're you're on the right path and people are noticing and it's it's great and um, we want to encourage you because we we love what you're doing and to have you on the podcast with us is like a it's like the end of the day for us (laughs) but we're like both looking forward to this like we can't wait you know we get to talk to you and you know it's exciting to um to know that there's people in your corner that support you sure. however they choose or however they can support you. Yeah. So having an Instagram account and having a following on Instagram, a community that you're building um, for a new business owner, how important to you is social media and connecting with an audience on, say, for example, Instagram? But for me, it's really important. So the two uh, platforms I really focus on are uh, Instagram and Facebook. I know they are pretty well connected and they are part of the same same company in a sense. And, but I do find that some people do stick to one versus the other. Uh, I, there are tons of platforms, but for me to learn them all, I've just sort of cut myself off on those two. They're the two I'm comfortable with. Um they are sort of the ones that most people, when you go into, or I found anyway, um, into sort of any types of coaching or courses about social media and marketing, they are often focused on those two as well. So it helps to get, um, when you're getting support from those types of resources that you're following those t- same types of social media platforms. Um, like, and I'm just finding them more, uh, I guess I want to say personal in a sense, like maybe it's just me because I'm reading people's posts and getting to know who they are in this, uh, even if it's such a digital world, but then you get those one or two, you know, private messages and it starts to become a bit more, uh, personal, a bit more real, uh, that there are people behind <laughs> the the posts there uh, because you can share both content and written uh, information as well as photos there's both sides that you get to see of people and and of other you know complementary businesses as well so you can see 
what um, people that you maybe want to collaborate with or working on, how are the other people um, in your community contributing to upcycling or what are they doing for their businesses and how can you support them, the ones that are in your neighborhood or even ones that are farther out of your neighborhood to, to draw attention to them and what are the people doing in your community. Um, you get to start to recognize some of the places in your neighborhood and, you know, you're building this community and you see followers, followers and they're posting, you know, that I just, you know, I went to the museum or I went to a sports event. And you're like, oh, yes, I've been there. I've done that. And then you, you get this way of, of learning about people through those two platforms. So that's, that's kind of why I just stick to those two, because I also don't want to spread myself so thin that I'm not getting the opportunity to learn about who's in my community and who, who sort of shares some of these same thoughts about upcycling and recycling and environmentally friendly initiatives. Um, I know with, with what you've made and stuff. So for the timeline that you've made and created these things now, it's not been a, a long period of time, but um, do you have any favorite things that you enjoy more than other things to make? Or have you had stuff that seems to be like a hot seller, I suppose? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, and right now, I would say that um, we have a dinosaur stuffy. It's like a taggy blanket. So like a stegosaurus, there's all kinds of little tags that have um, the, that are for the spikes. So when you have a, a young child and they're learning about tactile, tactile and sensory experiences mm-hmm. and teething, it gives them something to pull on. It gives them something soft. It gives them something to chew on. And those are definitely mm-hmm. been the, the ones that have sold the most right now. So it's just something that mm-hmm. is colorful and bright. So you get that uh, sensory opportunity for, for the, that development mm-hmm. as well with, with kids. So. That's neat. Have you done any custom things for people where they come to you with a request and you've had to make something that you don't normally would make? on your own i have not yet uh encountered okay. one um i would definitely give it some consideration to see if there's something that i could help with um creating i know there's lots of opportunity for people who bring in um like their baby's uh first sleeper that they came home from the hospital with and they want to turn that into a stuffed animal that is a you know something that the child would have later, you know, as, as they grow older and, and keep with them as a, as a memory of, of that. So there's definitely some opportunity to chat with, with people about what those custom uh, options might be and creating those memories. Anyway, for- one thing I like about doing custom for people is they're coming to you, like you said, with the item that they have sentimental attachment to, and they're giving this to you and trusting you, hmm. you know, that they're going to get it back, first of all, but that, you know, there's there's meaning behind the product, right? Personal connection with the product itself and the material. So to get it back, like you said, in a different form is is great. Like that's a. I wish we had that for our kids. Looking back, but we still you know. have some of our kids' things, like the knitted sweaters or the like the onesies and things that they came home in the hospital. But it's almost Maybe. like I have all that stuff. <laughs> there we go. So, but I never I know I didn't talk even. To think of like making it into something else like i i always just i know the kids when they look at them they'll they'll be like i was that small like i seriously fit into that <laughs> that's, like, yeah. that's almost more entertaining than to try and but i don't know Absolutely. like we don't have they're just the, sitting in a box they're right? just sitting in a box so they have no purpose but it's a great it's way a great to, yeah. to repurpose something and so just sitting in it as a keepsake exactly. why not make it as a new little object or toy or something yeah yeah and then you know the child would have that for a little bit longer as as they grow and play with that and start to use their imagination and um, connect with that stuffed animal and and as you're saying it has a story behind it so Mm -hmm. when you're working with um, local uh, vendors that make these items they they everything has a story behind it you know including the things that that you guys are making as well so you know connecting with people on that that level is, is really, it's really personal. It's really super nice. It is, right? Mm-hmm. And when you can connect the story back to the people and give them back something of meaning, like, you can't get that in any other store, right? Yeah. You just, you can't. So you are the only one who can do that. And having that customer trust always leads to the next, next thing. So we get custom off asked all the time. People come and ask us all the time for stuff. And 
it's a challenge because they don't give you a lot of parameters. Yeah. They just want the finished product, right? And uh, but it, it's just something special. I feel like I have to handle all this donated, sentimental items with really careful gloves, and it has to go in a special spot in the shop because I can't confuse it with anything else. And I just I have to give it my full attention because it, it mm. means something to somebody, rather than a piece of something I found on on my own, right? Yeah. So I, I just love the idea of being able to do something special for somebody and then to see the response from that yeah. customer, right? That's That means more than, to be honest, in some cases, means more than the financial side. I need the financial side so that I can continue doing this, but it's it's very rewarding to be able to give back and do something that means something to somebody on a deep level, you know? It's, yeah. it's great. Yeah, exactly. Because one of the things I learned during this sort of whole pandemic and newborns and pandemics is that the resources that we have in the community aren't always known. Um, so one of the things I've decided to do with June Board is to pick an organization to make financial contributions to from our sales and to help uh, make awareness for different um, charities and organizations that people may not have heard of that do need support, that support others. Uh, primarily, uh, organizations that are fo focused on moms and new parents uh, within the community. So you can always check out our website to find out about who we are uh, supporting that year. And um, that, and that's just, again, for, for me, but, you know, stretching that uh, community and that feeling community and, and sense of pride in what you do um, just a little bit, a little bit more. That's excellent. It's really cool. Yeah. It's really, it's very yeah. kind of you to do that, which yeah. is great. Yeah. And I'm sure that the charities that you help support really do appreciate it because, again, it's one thing to re receive financial support for your charity, but then also recognition and someone who's promoting your charity is is another thing that would cost them money to get in, in any way, to get advertising. So you're helping in two ways, mm. which is wonderful. Really, really good. Yeah. So what is the future of junebird.ca? Where where are you headed? What do you, what would, if you had money's no object, there's no, there's no way you can't succeed. What do you think this could turn into for you down the road? So I would love to turn this into um, a space where I could hire other makers to join uh, with me. You know, people that, um, are creative people that maybe need a little bit of support or extra income, something that they can do at home that, you know, they're interested in sewing, even being able to teach somebody some sewing techniques that they, they could learn, create things for uh, the shop and sell, sell much more than <laughs> I have right now. Um, you know, being able to offer more and more, um, types of uh, toys or um, accessories for kids, but being able to grow in the sense of supporting my community with other, um, uh, other, other parents and other creative people that just need a little bit of focus or something that they are interested in, but don't quite know what to do or just to connect with somebody that might want to have some space and time on their own, but you know, they, they want to create, but then what are they going to do with it after? So being able to, to take the things that they make and sell it in, in the shop would be fantastic. So finding those people and growing in that way would be something I would love to be able to do uh, anytime, <laughs> anytime soon so that we've got, uh, we've got more available and more people part of the, the upcycling world. So if, if there's a listener listening and they're in another province or country, and they're like, I can sew. Mm. I have time. I have young children, or I'm retired, yes. or I'm in a stage of my life where I would love to do something like this. Would you be willing to help them if they reached out to you and said, can you just Absolutely. get me started and give me some ideas? Yeah, give me a show. You can uh, reach me at uh, hello at junebird.ca. Send me an email. Let me know uh, what you're thinking about. And I definitely want to connect and see how you can start something like this in your community. See if, you know, we wanted to collaborate or join forces. Definitely willing to chat with anybody that uh, that is interested in something similar to this. So, so you're not to... hiding the secret sauce and you don't want anybody to yeah. be a part. You're open, right? To this. I am totally open. Totally Excellent. open to, to this. Excellent. Yeah. It's a great model. And I think many people would be interested in this, right? 
So I think that's something great that you can share with with it, with your community and beyond. Yeah. Right. Definitely. And that's kind of the whole idea behind behind having you on the podcast is to kind of <clears throat> raise that so other people can hear your voice and and hear what you're up to. That's that's wonderful. So the best way to find you is junebird.ca for your website, right? And then on Instagram, same the same there as well. Any anything you want to leave the listeners with? Um, any kind of advice starting a small business or um, upcycling? Anything you want to share as far as who you are and, and how how we can share your message further? Yeah, I just I'd say you know just go for it. It's it's the big the biggest piece of advice I could have. So, you know, think of what it is that you find rewarding, you know, share it as much as you're comfortable with sharing it. You know, it, even if you're just inspired and you inspire yourself and, you know, you don't share it with anybody, that's definitely okay too. So whatever you, you can do to help yourself um, relieve any anxiety or mental weight or stress um, that helps you just feel more comfortable with yourself, just just do it. You know, it, it doesn't have to be world changing. It can just be life changing in the sense of your own life. And it can be, that could be very, very big for some people. So I would say if it's starting a business, that's great. If it's, you know, moving to a new job, that's great. If it's just buying something that's going to, you know, be a great um, meal for yourself, something that, that you want to enjoy. Um, uh, just just go ahead and, and treat yourself because you know, you're definitely worth that and you're definitely worth um, sharing your inspirations. So That's very great. cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I the only thing I would think of is I know a lot of times with um, for what we do and a few other um, makers that we've seen, they like to share their process of you know, when you first buy a piece of fabric and then yeah. you've made it into something and trying to show the steps of how, how it all started. I think a lot of people seem to enjoy those steps and stuff. So that would be something I, we've, it's easy to forget. It's just nice to just want to jump into the project, but uh, yeah, that's definitely something I, I always like to watch for and stuff to see where you started and how it ended up. So yeah. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's really good. Great. Yeah, because we have the story of the material, but then there's That's the right. story of how it was turned from something into something else. People right. love to follow that along. They want to participate and see the steps. That's right. Right. And that's what's inspiring is like, I can do this. Right. I have a sewing machine. I got to reach out to, to these. I'm going to reach out to Jim Burdusky. Yeah. I'm going to, I want to be a part of this because I, I see the steps. I can do this. I feel comfortable. I've got a good teacher here that wants to help. Yeah. Right. So it's great. It's awesome. Yeah. Our dogs are howling at the moment for some reason. Oh, no. I have no idea what's going on up <laughs> they there. They both were... Oh. Yeah. They're having <laughs> so a very not. sad day. So we're going to attend to them in a moment. Yes. But <laughs> Poor thing. Yes. Sad day upstairs, <laughs> apparently, for something. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so the best way to find you, junebird.ca. Now, the one thing we like to do, and you know this very well, because you yes. are the most... Interactive. Interactive and quick to respond listeners for our podcast. Thank you. But we like to throw out a word at the end of the podcast. For those that have listened all the way to the end and maybe heard our dogs howling in the background, <laughs> what is the word for the day for this podcast yes. so that we can then reach out to these people? And this is what we're going to do for this one is if they respond with your word, we're going to give them a shout out on the next podcast that we're recording at the time that we receive the email. Okay. So it'll be a shout out saying, Hey, you know, this is uh, this is for Jen at Upcycle Canada. Thank you for, for responding. And here's Jen's website or her Instagram. Go give her a follow. And that's going to go out to all of our listeners around the world. So it's kind of neat. Yeah. So you are going to be picking the, the word that people are going to send back to us from this episode so that we can do that for them. So do you have a word? I do have a word. Okay. All right. I'm sit up go straight. Sit up straight. We want to hear it. Just wait. Yeah. Give us a second. Everybody this is a very important ready? time for us. All right. Ready? The word is beanbag. Oh, there you go. Right on. Beanbag. beanbag. So you're going to go to <laughs> Upcycle Canada. You're going to send us a message. You're going to find us on your 
Instagram, DM, all that stuff. DM us, email us, beanbag, mm-hmm. Bean and bag. you will be getting a shout out on a future podcast that's episode. Awesome. Yes. What do you think of that? Is that I, good? That's a great word. It's a good one? Yeah, it's two right. words, technically. Well, Unless, how, is beanbag it, one word? Or is it it's, two <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. So we are very thankful for you taking time for us today. Thankful for you for listening to our podcast. Yes. It's very surreal to have you come on now and be a part of it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to listen to this podcast. Me too. Because there's so much great information here. Yes. I'm inspired. I am. You're inspired. You're inspired. You're obviously inspired. I have so, a sewing machine too, but I don't see. It's, this is the second time now in this week that's been brought up about sewing. So it could be the thing I need to start. So, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. so you have a good person in your corner now I that do. you can reach out to yes. and get that support. That's perfect. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm for right your, here anytime. Thank awesome. you so much for your time. Thank you. Junebird.ca. It's a place to go. Right. And we're going to send people to you. And if you need help, you want to start something like this in your community, this is the person to talk to. Right that's here. right. Absolutely. Samantha, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. And we will talk soon, okay? Definitely. Okay. Talk soon. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Right. This has been the Upcycle Canada podcast. Thanks for listening today. We appreciate your feedback and would love to connect with you. Email your questions, comments, or suggestions to upcyclecanadapodcast at gmail.com. To find out more about our business and access links to all our social media sites, podcast notes, and more, please visit upcyclecanada.ca. A review of this episode on the podcast app of your choice is always appreciated. Please help us build this community by sharing our podcast with your family and friends. Our thanks to Jacob Moon for the instrumental backing track used in this podcast. Please visit jacobmoon.com for more on this talented Canadian artist. Join us again for more great topics, ideas, and practical steps to help you in your daily life. Thank you for listening. Let's keep this conversation going.